Good, I like it when I hand one out and they say they done been invited. That's a good thing. Amen? Isn't that a good thing? It's a positive reinforcement. Amen. And we're, uh, we are happy that that's happening. Want to continue to do it. Uh, how many of you have looked at our, uh, how many of you have looked at our new website? Did y'all know we had a new website? F- FPCNewMadrid.com. And uh, it's really nice and we're getting a lot of hits on it. I think we've had over a thousand people look at it already. And uh, yeah, over 1,500 people have looked at it. And uh, uh, I saw we've had, we've had as high as like 36 different people watch some of our messages on YouTube. And uh, that's, that's tremendous. Uh, and, uh, but uh, uh, you, you can also, uh, in the event that you forget or you don't carry cash or whatever, and you want to give your tithes and offerings, you can do that online now as well through PayPal on our website. So I uh, uh, just want to let you know about that. Romans chapter 10, and verse number 1 is where we're going to begin this morning. And uh, do pray that, that those that are unable to be with us this morning can be back tonight. There's quite a few folks have contacted us that they couldn't be here for, for different reasons. A lot of sickness this time of the year. And uh, uh, this is a good place to get healed. Somebody said something to me the other day about, uh, and if you disagree with this, just keep your opinion to yourself because you don't have the microphone. Somebody said something to me the other day about uh, uh, coming to church with something that might be catching. And I'm going to tell you for a fact, don't stay home on account of that. Huh? Whether you are the catchy or the catcher. Because I got enough faith in my God that he ain't going to let no epidemic break out in the church house. People that are hungry for God. Amen? Huh? Hey, if the little woman with the issue of blood can break the law just to get to Jesus, we can. Hello? Amen? Romans chapter 10, <laughs> that didn't go over too good with some folks, but that's all right. I ain't scared of Ebola. I know Jesus. That's right. Okay, I know Jesus. Now, he gives us some good sense, and I'm not saying go out and start hugging and kissing everybody that's walking up down the street, but I'm also telling you that when you come to church, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. That's right. All right? <laughs> yeah. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, somebody want to tell me who Romans is addressed to? Church. Church folks. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now that's not a big deal altogether when you first read it. I mean, good, Paul, you should want everybody to be saved. We should want everybody to be saved. That's not a big deal if you disregard the tiny fact of whom he is speaking. What does it mean when Paul tells folks and writes a letter to folks that he wants Israel to be saved? That's a big deal. Okay? Salvation is the ultimate goal of God for all of mankind. Now we who have the mind of Christ, which Romans 2 and 16 tells us that we do, we must share that goal of seeing salvation come to every man, woman, boy, or girl that walks the face of the earth. Jesus, what, that was his primary goal, is to see salvation come. That was the reason for his existence. Matthew 1 and 21 says, You call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Luke 19 and 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We have got to have a burning desire. You're, you're right at the top of your prayer list should be, Lord, give me a greater burden to see souls saved. Amen. Give me a greater desire to see people filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and see their life changed. Verse 2 says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal 
of God. But not according to knowledge. Okay? Would somebody help Samantha's children find the right Sunday school class, if you don't mind? Thank you, Sister Casey. Sister Casey will help y'all get into your class. Happy to see y'all today. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And I want to stay here for just a few minutes this morning. This may not be romp em, stomp em, though it's early yet. Paul says, I am aware that they have a zeal of or for God. Now that word zeal means eagerness, a desire. They have an excitement for God. They have a, uh, there's something in their heart that wants God. But the Bible says, but it is not according to knowledge. So then we've got to ask ourselves a couple of questions here. They have a zeal for God. They have an enthusiasm, a, a, an eagerness for God. But it is not according to knowledge. So we have to decide, we have to ascertain from the scripture, what is their zeal for God based upon? What is it that has caused them to be hungry for God if it's not knowledge? And the second question is, how do you receive a zeal for God that is based upon knowledge? If the Jews don't have it, okay, that's not talking about the, 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 the every Jew that lives, Brother David, but it's speaking generally as the, to those that, that turned their back and that refused and said crucify him. They do have a zeal for God. You understand that they said crucify him because of that zeal for God. They thought they were doing the right thing toward God. Amen? Amen. The first question is, what is their zeal for God based upon? Now, who are we talking about? Israel. They are the people of promise. They are the people of covenant. So their zeal for God is based upon two things. Number one is their pedigree. They feel that they have a special connection, and they do, but they feel that they have a special connection based upon the blood that flows through their veins. Because they happened to be born into a Jewish family who were created, they were a, a, a family, a group of people created for the work of the Lord, for Jesus Christ to come through their lineage. But to them, what they have, what they have failed to realize is that it's not enough to have Jewish blood flowing through your veins. And the second thing is, is they were given the law on Mount Sinai. They were given the commandments. I believe it's 618 different, com, different tenets and different parts of the law, commandments that they have to follow. And, and they were given those commandments. They were given those laws. And, and since they are the ones who the law was given to, and since they know how to follow the law of God as they've been taught from little children, so they can follow a set of rules and thereby be justified. Now the second question is, how does one receive a zeal for God that is based upon knowledge? Is the scripture still up there so you can follow me? All right. How, a zeal for God which is based upon knowledge. The way that you do that is one word, by faith. That's how you get a zeal for God that is based upon knowledge, that's not based upon who you are, who your daddy was, who your mama was, or, or who your daddy or mama was not, uh, but that it is a, 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 a belief in God, a pure, unadulterated leveling of the playing field, faith in God. And faith in turn cancels or better yet, fulfills the first question. Because I want to let somebody know this morning that with faith being the determining criteria, a powerful message is sent both to the haves and the have-nots. Now y'all got to stay with me a little bit this morning. I may be tough to follow. I had to lead the service, lead the singing, do the birthdays, play the drums. I might be going to play the piano directly. <laughs> Preach a message. Amanda come in my office and said, Tripp's got to work. Stacy ain't here. What are we going to do? I said, we're going to make it. You forget who you're talking to here. Huh? I am the man with the plan. 
And if I keep on saying that, Brother David, I might believe it. <laughs> okay, we got to get out, man. I woke up, God have mercy, I woke up this morning and it's Sunday. And you know what? I get to go to church on Sunday, Brother Pete. I get to go to the house of the Lord. I get to go be in the presence of the Lord. I didn't think what might not happen, who might not be here, what might not be going on. I get to be with Jesus. And that's the most important thing in all the whole world right this minute is I get to be in the presence of the Lord. I get to feel His presence. I get to rejoice in the Lord. And by, by faith, uh, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to see somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost before they leave here this morning. He said they've got a, an eagerness, a, a desire for God that is not based upon knowledge. So the way that we get that is by faith. And with faith being the determining criteria. Everybody say faith. Faith, faith is what matters. Don't matter what color you are, it don't matter how rich you are, no matter how poor you are, no matter how much dope you smoke, don't matter how many men or women you've been with, it don't matter how much beer you poured down your veins, it don't matter how much how many times you vomited in the middle of the street, it don't matter how much you stole, it don't matter how much you've lied, it don't matter how much you cheated. If you have faith in God, you can receive salvation for your soul. <laughs> It don't matter how you raised, don't matter what you call yourself, don't matter what religion you were brought up in or wasn't brought up in, it doesn't make any difference. If you have faith in God, salvation is for you. So what is faith? What is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith... Is, the, is there anybody in here that does not believe what I just said? Is there anybody that does not believe that, that your past does not intimidate the Lord in any way? Absolutely, Brother David. Our, our past. And, and Paul, though in our eyes was a little bit of a scallywag. In his own eyes, he had a hunger for God, a zeal for God. When he went and, and beat Christians and drug them out, and when he stood there and watched them stone Stephen, he thought he was doing a work of the Lord. You gotta, if, if, if you don't believe that, Brother Pete, it's faith in God that's the difference maker. It's faith in God. Think about it. Think, think about this just for a minute. You think about our world. And I, I've got three children, and I just happen to be a child as well. And I'm a grandchild. I'm a great-grandchild. I'm a great-great-grandchild, but I can't prove that. I didn't know him. But you think about it just for a minute. Now what I'm about to tell you, about to say, it ain't nothing profound, nothing, but it's true. Christmas morning, just, just hypothetical, your little girl is going to open up. Here we go. You're buying her a pair of Uggs. And they fit up to their name. Okay, they're Eskimo boots. They look like something that you wear. Probably, here's the crazy thing, and I'm, I'm going to move on. But if you'd have wore them when I was a kid, you'd have got made fun of. <laughs> because they're, they're kind of goofy looking. You know. But if, if your daughter, boy, they're, they're, let's see, we're, we're going hot pink tops and black on the bottom with tiger stripe fur around the top of them they are bad to the bone now think about this think about this brother david the first thing that's going to go through her mind is i can't wait to get to go back to school and wear my new boots and everybody to see 
how cool I am. Huh? Be, think about it. Because we no longer say, how do you like my new boots? We say, how do you like my new Uggs? <laughs> am I telling the truth? So they have faith that that brand of boots is going to make them cool at school. Huh? They have faith. But you know what? Next month, they ain't going to be cool no more. And the faith that they once had in a pair of boots or the right brand of jacket, the right brand of britches. You know, I heard somebody talking about you, you can buy blue jeans for $200 now. No. No, I'm fresh out of them. <laughs> Besides, Brother Billy, they don't make them for me and you. <laughs> Though I have seen some fellers built like me and you trying to wear them. <laughs> Can I get a witness, Brother Richard? <laughs> but you, you think about it just for a minute. How much faith goes in to trying to get the coolest of everything so I'll be accepted but then brother David when it ain't cool no more I see it on Facebook all the time paid $150 for him gonna let him go for 30 because they ain't cool no more listen to me now that's it's faith Faith in the power of something that is so temporary, something that is so fickle, something that is dumb. That is just so shallow. But, but it's a way of life. We, and you say, I'm not throwing rocks. We've tried to do that. I, I remember taking money. I got to buy Carly this perfect brand of something. Doesn't matter that I walked by 12 racks of them that didn't have a tag on it that looked just like it. For a third of the price. Because it's got to be this so I'll be cool. Because that's what all the popular kids wear. Think about how much emphasis and stuff that we put on pleasing some folks that we ain't never even going to talk to again when we get out of school. But I'm telling you something this morning. Faith in something that will change your life forever. Faith in a God that, that you will lose your desire to be pleasing to everybody around you. And by virtue of being pleasing to God, you will find yourself accepted by men. That's in the book. I, I, got a, I chased a rabbit or two right then, but y'all bear with me. What is faith? Faith is the substance of of things hoped for. Here we go where I was going with that. I lost my mind just for a minute. I've had people, conversations with people, more, more so I have conversations with people that had a conversation with folks because there's certain things people just ain't going to say to me. Okay, I wish they would. I could deal with that. Okay, but Uggs are $200 britches or North Face jackets, or I, I, y'all have to forgive me because that, that stuff may not even be cool no more because I'm not, I'm not all that with it. But things, things that make us pretty, that make us attractive to the world. Do you know there are people, Brother Billy, that will not live for God? Because of things? So, it, you say, well, I, they have more faith in the power of a name brand 
to make their life good. Oh, I'm meddling right now. I know I am. You just have to forgive me. I love you anyway. This is one of those when you get a whooping and your daddy says it hurts me more than it does you and it feels like a lie right that minute. Okay, think about it. We're talking about Brother Rice. We've got to put our faith in God. I can tell you right now, I don't have no more friends when my pocketbook is full or when it's empty. Now, they might hang around a little bit more. But you know what? They're, they're not my friends. All right, we have got to realize I'm preaching something right now. That is faith in God has, I feel the Holy Ghost, faith in God has got to supersede our faith or our, our trust in anything else, including your mom and your daddy, your husband and your wife, or your siblings. Faith in God has got to be number one. Now the reason why in many of our lives those things matter so much is because we put our hands on them. We can touch them. I know that them boots are going to make everybody gather around me and brag on them. Come on now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now that word substance, that word substance means confidence, assurance, or giving substance to things hoped for. Now in a carnal way of thinking, that's dumb. Right? You mean I'm putting my faith in something that I'm just hoping for? When I've got the grocery store, I mean, the, not the grocery store, the, the, the shop, the mall, and, and, and the, the kid at school that's got his pocket full of pills, that, that's real stuff. You're asking me to have faith in something that ain't even happened yet? <clears throat> things hoped for is the opposite of things possessed. The evidence of things not seen. That word evidence is proof. And things not seen is obviously the opposite of things that are seen. So here's it in a nutshell. Here's what the, the, the writer of Hebrews is saying. That an Israelite could go through the motions of following the law without exercising faith. So you and I can go through the motions of being Pentecost without actually having faith in God. And for some, please don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I, I've had to reinforce and reinforce to somebody the other day. I had somebody tell me, I want to start coming back to church, but I'm wondering if my wife can wear britches to church. I said, absolutely. Then you know what else I told him? Okay. Brother Pete, how do we get where faith in God is more paramount? What God's going to do for me is bigger than what I can't do in the world. Look what God can do for me. Oh, my God, have mercy. At the end of the day, Sister Marie, it's going to be what's going to take me to heaven and get me, I want to get out of this world anyway. How come we invest so much in being pleasing into a world we're trying to leave in the first place? Huh? I don't want to stay here. This ain't heaven. And I don't mean to be ugly to nobody's religion, but this ain't heaven. That's right. Because I read the book, heaven, there's going to be no tears. Going to be no sorrow. Going to be no sadness. Going to be no party. Going to be no death. Going to be no night. We live and reign with him forever. We'll meet the dead in Christ in the air. 
<laughs> How nutty can it be to believe so strongly in something that ain't never happened yet? An Israelite can go through the motions without exercising faith. We can too. Through faith we understand the work of God. Through faith we give offerings, not just monetary. We give of ourselves, of our time, of our energy, of our offerings to God. By faith we please God. By faith we obey God. By faith we follow God. Through faith we receive strength to receive the promises, embrace the promises of God through faith. Faith is the substance, the realness, the tangibleness of things hoped for. Faith is where hope comes alive. Faith is where hope is given birth to. Faith is in the middle of a trial, in the middle of a heartache, in the middle of a, of a time of bondage, a time of, of, of anger, a time of no understanding. It's when hope is given birth to in the middle of your own personal hell on earth. So where does hope come from? And faith is the evidence, the proof of things not seen. So where do those things come from? Where does hope come from? Where does things not seen come from? Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is just another instance in which Joel 2 and 32 is quoted with Acts 2 and 21 being the first time by Peter on the day of Pentecost when he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just in case you're wondering, I'll have somebody else dismiss and I'm going to be at the back door. You're going to have to shake my hand. I want y'all to know that before Brother Ray and Sister Betty came to church, I used to preach a whole lot different. But they told me they liked to come to church here because that I preached the truth. So then I started preaching really straight after they came here. <laughs> so it, it's their fault. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I, I really want to preach where we hang from the rafters and stuff, but it's, it's faith in God that causes us to hang from the rafters, so to speak. It's faith in God that causes me to praise him with wild abandon. It's, it's faith with God that causes me to, to step out in front of everybody and be vulnerable and, and take a chance on everybody saying, wonder what's wrong with him, wonder what's going on in his life, wonder what kind of sin he's done. But it, you know what? It's my faith in God that causes me to step out there and say, you know what? You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Better yet, you don't know like I know how bad I need him. Remember, the goal is salvation, which cannot be received until the desire is faith-based and not works-based. Until the desire, you, you, just because your grandma came to church here and your mama came to church here and your daddy and your grandpa and, and, and they prayed and they fasted and they lived for God don't mean that you don't have to get in there yourself and dig out a relationship with God for yourself. It's based upon faith. It's not works. It's not pedigree. It's not heritage. It's not because you got enough money. I read in the book the lady that gave just the widow's might gave more than everybody. We're, we're trying to be pleasing to God, not be pleasing to those that are around us. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse number 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the question I have to ask you this morning is why 
Would you call on the Lord in the first place?